Hey friends, welcome back. All right, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I use Keynote on the MacBook to create calendar pages that I can use then in my digital planning spreads or even to create digital planners. Uh, before we jump in though, I do wanna say that there are some features in the Mac version of Keynote that are not available on the iPad version. However, you can create these pages with the iPad version. It's just a lot more of a manual process. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so I've just got a blank page in Keynote. Um, you can go in here to document up in the corner, slide size, and this is where you would do a widescreen. You could switch it to do a portrait, or if you are like me currently, you can do a custom size and do a square planner. I usually keep it to the 1024 width um, or height on the long side, 1024 on the long side, that way, all of my personal planners are all the same size. So whenever I create text or bring in an image, I don't have to adjust them bigger or smaller for a bunch of different sized planners. Personal preference thing, totally not required. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here to table. And then you have all of these options for different table styles. I'm just gonna bring in a plain, we'll do this green one here. Um, and then I like to go into format and then table, alternating row color, I'm gonna turn off. And then you can also go into cell, color fill, and I'm gonna turn that off too, just so I have a blank page to work with. And then on your sides here, you've got this one here is gonna create your columns. I'm gonna do seven for the seven days of the week. And then this one's gonna create your rows. And I'm gonna do actually seven for this as well because I'm gonna create a top piece where the month is gonna go. And then my second uh, row here is gonna have my days. So Monday through Sunday, Sunday through Saturday, depending on how you plan. So the first thing I wanna do is just size this table. You can click this round circle here and then it'll give you these sizing things. So if you hold shift, it's gonna maintain the aspect ratio that it already had, which if you're doing a landscape planner, this is almost always perfect, but when you do a square planner, not so much. So I'm not doing it perfectly sized yet because this top one, if you go between the, um, the row numbers here, you can grab and pull up. I want this to be my, uh, my month. So this one's gonna be a little bit bigger. Number two is gonna be my days of the week. And I want this to be a little bit smaller because obviously the only thing that's gonna be in there for me is the day itself. And now you see how all these ones are all like janky and not the same size. If you select, hold shift, come down here to seven. Now I have all of these bottom rows selected and I can go back to table, scroll down to height. The width we didn't change, that's the same, but height, we have some of them are different sizes than others. And you can tell because this right here is grayed out. I can type in a number here and we'll say we'll do 99. So now all of these cells that I have selected are 99 points high. I want them a little bigger though. So let's go 120 just to give them a little more of a squared look. They're not perfectly square, but that's okay too. So now I'm gonna do Again, select the entire um, table. I'm gonna go to text, and then I'm gonna select my text for the table. Now, sometimes you want, might wanna have your um, month a different text or a different font, and that's totally fine. I'm not gonna mess with that right now because we're trying to make this kind of easy to follow. So we're just gonna pick this one, and then you can pick the size. Typically, I will choose the size for the day numbers because those are gonna take up the most amount of cells. So I'll make those 16 points. And then I want my days to be different. So I'm gonna select row two. I'm gonna make these, we'll say 22 points. And then the month itself, I'm gonna make, we'll say 42 points. And I'm just guessing here, these might change. Um, so you can see right here, this row of cells, number one, is gonna have the text floating in the middle. If I wanted it at the top, I would select this one. If I wanted it at the bottom, I would select that one. For the uh, month, in the middle is fine. 
These are your justifications. Do you want them on the left, middle, right? Um, the uh, ad adjusting left and right doesn't really apply here because that's more for like paragraphs or bodies of text. It's not our thing right now. So I'm just going to keep it centered. For the days of the week, same thing. I'm not going to adjust that. I want them centered and floating. However, these guys, let me show you real quick. If I type in a number, see how it's just kind of floating in the middle? That's not what you want for a calendar. So I'm going to select all of these cells here, hold shift. And then I want them to go to the uh, all the way to the right and then up to the top. And I did see that font looked a little bit small, so I'm going to bring this up to 20. And then I'm going to adjust my days up to, say, 26. Okay, so now we've got our format set. We need to go ahead and we'll do our days of the week first because that's easy. To uh, write in a cell, just double click it. And then I'll, all I'm going to write is Sunday. Okay, so all I've written is Sunday. This is probably going to have to change size because we know Wednesday is a long word. But if I mouse over this, I'm, I don't have it so that I can edit text. See, I just clicked it once and now I'm going to mouse over it. A yellow dot is going to show up right here in the middle. Here's the secret. If you grab this and drag it over, it's going to fill in those days for you. So now, because again, row two is highlighted, I can tell this, okay, go to 24. Let's see if the word Wednesday will fit. Not quite yet. Let's do just 20. There we go. So now all of our, our days of the week are fit in here. So up here for our month, we can highlight all of these cells, go to cell, and then this is where you can change your border style. Um, I'm going to tell it that I don't want any border around these cells. So I hit this one here that shows all of the sides of the cell selected. And I'm going to say no border. Now, though, I have a blank space here and I don't want that. So I'm going to select them all, select the bottom border and say, yes, I want one there. So now you don't see the cells up top, but I can double click in here and I can type May. And now we have our top piece here. Again, you can just do a regular floating text box for your month if you want to. Um, but in the interest of keeping it all in one table, that's how we're going to show it. Now, I don't know what the 1st of May is. So let's look that up real quick. That, oh, it's a Saturday. Okay. So now with Keynote um, for the Mac, just like the days of the week, you can drag and slide to create sequential numbers. However, it won't let you do all of the cells. So with the first being a Saturday, that is what it is. We're just going to put that there. But if I put a two here, watch what happens. Our little yellow thing appeared, but it's just going to duplicate that two. We don't want that. So if I come over here and write a three and then highlight both of these cells by holding shift, now it's going to say, oh, you want sequential numbers. Okay. So then we have eight. So we're going to do nine and 10. I'm just hitting tab to go back and forth between cells. Hold shift touch, grab the yellow dot, drag it over. So now we need 16 and 17. Grab and pull. Super easy. Oh, we need another row. Eight. And then I'm just going to write 31 because we don't need to write it or we don't need to do more. So that was basically how you're going to get a super quick, super quick uh, calendar in Keynote. Now, granted, if it would do all the numbers, just like I do one, two, and then tell it, okay, fill in the rest of this calendar with numbers, that would be fantastic. But all of my research that I have dug through says that that is not possible to do. So we deal with what we got. Um, now, if you're making blank calendars, say you just want to do the day or the month and the days of the week. We were done with that like three minutes ago. That is super easy to do. But also too, now that we have this blank or this canvas to work with, with the uh, information that we already wanted, we can just <laughs> drag it off the screen. No, I'm just joking. We can just go here and we're going to add a new slide. Get rid of all this crap because we don't want that. But now we can just come here touch this circle to select the table, 
Command C for copy, Command V to paste, double click, and now we've got June. The days are already here, but if we need to get rid of all these numbers, just highlight all these cells, hit delete. Now they're gone. I didn't look to see what the 31st was. So Tuesday needs to be June 1st. So one, two, double click to type and drag. Six, seven, highlight, drag. 13, 14, drag. And I'm just using, again, tab to go uh, through these through these cells. So 27, 28, 29, 30. And now we don't need row eight for this calendar. So we're going to get, whoops, get rid of that one. So, I mean, how long did that take us, right? It doesn't take very long to edit one once you have one built. And if you want to change the font for anything, say you want the entire table to be in a different font, you're just going to touch the circle here, go to uh, text, select your new font. And if you don't change the size, then only the font uh, face is going to change. So let's change it to this one. Done. Now we have two calendars, two separate fonts, all fully dated. So is it the easiest way of going about it? Yeah. I mean, it's the easiest way uh, that is out there now. Um, we can see just as I glance up that my calendar is not centered and that's really bothering me. But these little snap guides here, these yellow, this yellow crosshair, now I know it's centered on this page and that makes me feel better. I'm a little crazy, but that's okay. So yeah, it's super, it's simple, uh, but it is a little bit time consuming. However, I will tell you this. It is not near as time consuming as sitting there manually entering each number one at a time. That is a pain in the butt. That is how I did it for two years. Now I'm like, Psh, I can type six numbers instead of 31 numbers. So super simple. That is how I do calendar pages in Keynote. Now you can copy this um, by just right clicking, hit copy, and then you could go into GoodNotes and just paste this there. And if you're using... Um, airdrop, then you could create your calendar page in Keynote on your Mac and just airdrop it to your tablet. Super easy to do. Um, otherwise, you could just upload it to, say, Google Drive or Dropbox and pull it down that way. I do want to give a special thank you to my patrons. You guys are freaking fantastic. Um, I don't even know what to say anymore. It's, it's like it's, it's blowing me away. So I do want to thank you all personally for supporting me and just sharing the love of this amazing community because it is so fun. It's so fantastic. And I, I just, I'm blown away by your support. So that's going to be it for me today. I'm going to go ahead and close out this video. If it was a little confusing at the end, I do apologize. Um, if you have any questions or anything you guys know, you can leave it down in the comments or you can hit me up on Instagram at Lenny Digitals. Uh, yeah. So I'm excited to, uh, to see what you guys come up with. So Keep me posted. Let me see what you got. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.